your eyes. You know, because I, I'm very uh, specific about making sure that this is answered clearly because some people uh, have even gone to the point of saying that, you know, blue eyes, uh, light skin, light colored eyes are a reflection of wellness, of health, and so forth, and so being. But let me tell you, I've seen enough blue eyed people with cancer. So I don't know what happened to their situation, why their eyes are still blue and they have cancer, why the eyes did not change color. Uh, humanity, uh, we come in many different hues and colors and we vibrate and radiate uh, very uh, beautifully according to the blessing that we have been endowed with. And this is a blessing that I've been endowed with based on my genetics and uh, thank you for observing and I really appreciate sharing this moment with you and getting a chance for you to look into my eyes so you can see that they are real. No contact here. <laughs> hey, welcome home. <laughs> All right. So, so, uh, so as you see, this is our kitchen. This is our teaching kitchen here. And as I was about to mention, our juices, we have the vegetable juice mix. This is ginger. Pure 100% ginger juice, uh, orange juice. So we mix it up here on a daily basis. This is what we have available for our guests today. Coconut water, pure agua de pipa, fresh coconut water. Again, that's our vegetable juice blend. This here is pear, fresh juice pear. These are the Andrew pears. Uh, of course, our watermelon is, is here. And uh, this is our tomato hot shot. This is tomato with onion, garlic, uh, ginger, hot pepper, turnip, radish, all the hot stuff that's going to burn the mucus out of your system. It's going to dry up that cold. It's going to open up your respiratory channel. And also, it's going to energize you and get that blood circulating. Just pure 100% uh, cucumber juice. And hey, more coconut water for the family. This is how we do it here every day. Abundance of juice, loads of juice, and of course all the salads and everything else. We have our refrigerators are constantly stocked, you know, so we have our vegetables ready to go. We have more vegetables over here and our pantry. We have an open pantry, so this is how we show you how to create right here in our kitchen and we uh, get you to participate in the process by stocking quite well for you with our nuts, seeds, grains, you name it. And from the photos that you saw we posted today on Facebook, the pizza, the wrap, the, the cakes, the, 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 uh, the crackers, the pies, you know, the juices, this is it. This is where we do it. Uh, so let's journey upstairs here. And as we move upstairs, this is our lounge area up here. This is uh, where we have our library. We have a, a, a condensed version of our library. The Sunfire Library uh, boasts more than 12,000 titles of real books, uh, all about nonfiction, think about reality, about uh, growth self-growth. So here, we, we barely have a, a thousand of them out here available for you to peruse, you know, uh, Brazilian cuisine, uh, African cuisine, uh, Caribbean cuisine, we have the Latin cuisine, we have Chinese, Indian, we have Arab, we have the world cuisine right here. We also have books on yoga, we have uh, many of the, 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 the raw food books that have been put out. We have uh, a, a serious uh, classic here, the, the Bible of Living Foods. Uh, of course, my dear brother, Victor Skulvinskis. And we have a very ageless volume of Dr. Ann Wigmore, Naturama Living Textbooks uh, from the Hippocrates Health Institute. This is one of the original from Boston, Massachusetts, and this here was published, uh, let's see, we got Dr. Ann's signature on it as well. Uh, Dr. Ann and I did quite a bit of uh, presentations together over the years at different expos and seminars and things of that nature. This one was published in 1970. So uh, we have quite a, a wealth 
for you here. Here is a, one of the great little books from Victoria School of Vince, because Love Your Body, Live Food Recipes uh, with Sprouts. And it was uh, introduced by Dick Gregory. So here's Dick Gregory and Victoras back in the days, you know, and the cover was done by Peter Max, one of the great artists of the 70s. Uh, so we have a few of these uh, relics here. We have, of course, uh, I would say the master of living foods, uh, Professor Hilton Hotema, uh, he lived to be 90 plus. Uh, we have quite a few of his books. You know, he left us with over 100 books. Uh, so we're talking about, you know, the, the, the raw food scholar, uh, extraordinaire. And this book here is on orthopedy, the new science of health and natural healing, as it was done by Hilton Hotema and Herbert Shelton, where they had their institute similar to what we're uh, doing here today, uh, teaching the whole science of living foods and natural life. So here at our lounge area over here, we have this beautiful view overlooking the... Uh, the Panama Canal, where you can see in the distance all the stuff that's going on. Uh, we're building our garden right here. Uh, we're facilitating the construction of the boutique hotel next door. So once that's done, we're going to get this galvanized zinc down, and we're going to put up a beautiful garden for you here. We're going to have a sauna, jacuzzi, hot tub. Uh, we're going to have a mud pit <laughs> in there. Uh, we're going to have a yoga platform. And this is how we do it here at the Sunfire Institute for 2017. We have a retail store focusing on bulk, all organics, Aris Life, my brand, all organics. So, so we, have, we have um, Doe Peterson is asking, to begin a raw lifestyle, would you recommend, what, what uh, would recommend the transition method to ju or just jump in, like, which is best, to jump okay. in or make it slow transition? Well, let me tell you. Uh, let, let's sit down here. Uh, let me tell you how this works now. Uh, I've, seen, I've seen it done in many different ways. You know, uh, the most impressive uh, transition that I have ever seen was done by one of my A students, uh, Brother Stanley Banks. Stanley Banks is George Benson's bass player. Stanley Banks uh, came to my place in Brooklyn, New York in 1999, uh, the Sunfire Juice Club, and he enrolled in the classes that we had going on there, and he decided that at the point that he was ready to go all live. I explained to him uh, that it was a one-way street <laughs> once you get into this, because it's hard turning back. Once the body becomes clean, the tissues become clean, they're like brand new sponges. And if you put toxins back in there, then they're going to absorb at deeper levels. So you need to be careful once you're taking this step. That's caution. That's a word of caution. You really need to be ready. And being ready, I'm talking about mentally more so than even physically. Because if the mind is ready, the body is going to follow. Remember, the body, the body is just a beast. It's an animal, and it needs to be trained. It needs to be homeschooled. And the best way to homeschool it is to do a blood washing. Okay, you don't have to wash the brain. <laughs> you know, the brain is under your command as that spiritual entity that uh, dwells in this physical body of this animal being that we transit in but we need to wash out the blood of this animal. And washing out the blood basically uh, takes effect immediately once you stop putting in toxic foods into the body. So we stop putting in animal products, we stop putting in processed foods, we stop putting in all of the greasy fat and the heavy cooked starches into our, into our system and the body automatically is going to go on a detoxing plan immediately. So anyway, I've seen my brother Stanley Banks where he switched from one day of consuming everything under the sun, and he said actually he even picked out the night before because he figured that if this was real, he's not going to get to eat pork anymore if he really got onto this live food diet. So the guy actually literally picked out and ate all kinds of forms of pig that he could find the night before. The next day, he took on a living food diet, and for one year, after he became all living food, consistently, the brother lost 98 pounds in one year, 365 days. And 
uh, he has not stopped flying ever since then. So we're talking now uh, 16 years of completely all raw food, switching from one day to the next. So you have to have a strong mental constitution when you do that. You know, and of course you need a good coach that can help you understand the changes that the body is going through so you don't misinterpret you know, a healing crisis or a cleansing crisis as a, a sickness, a disease, an illness, or something that needs to be placed in check, which is what, you know, the normal orthodox traditional med medical system does by giving you vaccines and, uh, you know, pills and all of these types of things, whether it's to arrest a flu or a cold or whatever it may be. No, uh, you need to be able to go with the flow and understand that a lot of these reactions are part of the healing Christ. But beyond that, uh, if you want to take the slow road, you want to take the safe road, you want to take the gentle road. Number one, uh, you look at the four uh, groups of food, fruits, vegetables, uh, protein, and starches. The ones that have uh, sugar or fruits, the ones that are contain fat or protein, the ones that are high in starch, the complex carbohydrates, a group in its own, and then the ones that are neutral, that contain no fat, no starch, no sugar, these are your vegetables. So we need to create a balance, number one. So the best place to start out from is to know that you are not too far of an ex at an extreme, especially when it comes to the starches and protein. The protein are the ones that contain fat, all your seeds, nuts, all of your vegetable, uh, fruit, vegetable, fruits uh, that contain fat, coconuts, olives, avocados, uh, almonds, walnuts, pecans, sunflower seeds, you name it, all of those, and some of your beans that are high in, in fat, like the lentils and your peanuts and things of that nature, and of course your animal products, you need to you know, be careful with those. We only use those as a reference, but we do not recommend the consumption of these products, of course, and you trying to move on to this uh, vegan lifestyle, you know that already. So we really uh, want to emphasize the point, though, that besides those fatty foods, your starchy foods, which are your grains, your uh, deep root vegetables, like the potatoes and the yams and things of that nature, the cassava, and also your legumes your beans that are pretty much all 70% starch and 30% protein, those very high intense uh, dense foods, you need to be careful with the quantity of those foods. So again, starting off with 25% to begin with of starches, protein, vegetables, and fruits, that's a good place to start because I think most of us are probably like 80% uh, <laughs> starches and protein, you know, meat and potato. So starting from that base, then we gradually now want to decrease, number one, the amount of protein, of fatty foods, and also drastically decrease the amount of starchy foods, the grains, the heavy, deep roots, and the beans itself. Drastically reduce that quantity, gradually reduce the quantity of uh, fatty foods, the protein, and increase the amount of vegetables. Those are your non-starchy vegetables, your green leafy vegetables, and your vegetable fruits like tomatoes, cucumbers, eggplants, zucchinis, and so forth, and also gradually increase your amount of fruits. So you drastically reduce your starch, gradually reduce your fatty foods, drastically increase your vegetables, and gradually increase your fruits. That's a good starting point. Get to the point where you may be consuming uh, within a relative short period of time, 30 days to maximum 90 days. You're doing one third fruits, one third vegetables, and one third a combination of starches and protein with more protein than starches. And then from there, the pendulum just keeps swinging where you ultimately gonna have a high concentration of fruits and vegetables in your diet with a good solid uh, intake of fatty protein foods and very minimal amount of starchy foods. And this is the way to go. You come here to the Institute, we'll be more than happy to set up a personalized program for you. Or we could do that online. I, I do coaching 
on Skype. So my Skype name again is Aris Latam Sunfire. You can set up for a coaching session to me on Skype. All of this will be reflected on the uh, new website Aris Dash Latam dot com, and also we'll be posting the information on Facebook as well. So just to update you, we have. Uh, almost 60 people live right now and uh, just to let you know everyone is okay. very excited very happy about what you're sharing um, we have another question is saying will eating live foods help decrease or eliminate thyroid, thyroid issues well, thyroid issues is associated, especially uh, the, the hyperactive thyroid, uh, it, it's, it's associated with consumption, high consumption of starch, starchy foods, particularly corn. So be careful with corn. As a, as a matter of fact, most corns today are GMO, they're genetically modified. So really you have to be careful with that. But especially those uh, starchy corn, the dry corn that they used to make cornmeal and cornbread and popcorn and things of that nature, these are a major suspect in the cause of, of, of uh, these types of, of conditions of the thyroid. So uh, to balance things out, I want to send you to the sea and consume a lot of seaweeds. You need iodine. So lots of kelp and dulse and things of that nature. Decrease your starches, particularly your corn. Eliminate that uh, if it's not too much of a big uh, loss for you. Because, you know, once we get to these positions where we have these types of issues, there are some addictions that is going on that is uh, perpetuating these issues. So sometimes it is not that easy to just let go. So as we do it here on a scientific level, we want to be able to uh, help you, you know, giving you a jump start by inviting you here to the Institute to go on a cleansing program, a detox program, or even go on a, a complete uh, liquid uh, juice and coconut water fast so that we together can address these issues under supervision with guided help based on my experience and also the experience of many experts who have written extensively about these types of, of conditions. Perfect. Um, we have a question that I know a lot of people are interested in. It's about water. And Haiti is asking, what about water intake? Water intake, absolutely. The body is 70% moisture, just like the planet. Like we see that big ocean out there, all these oceans out there. Uh, the body of water on the planet is 70%. The human body is similar composition, 70%. So we need lots and lots and lots of water. Yes, of course, the doctor will tell you eight glasses of water a day. Well, that is based obviously on the fact that you're eating a very dense, high starch and high protein diet, which are very low in moisture. So we're recommending that you eat a more moist food diet or uh, consumption of high moisture fruits and vegetables. But uh, I know the real issue behind the question is based on the fact that I, as a human being, for over 40 years now, I have not consumed water as you know it. The water that I consume is strictly living water that comes through a plant source. So I drink coconut water as my primary drinking water. All waters that are best suited for human consumption needs to be filtered through the plants. So the, the water from mangoes, <laughs> the water from, hey, watermelon. You know the English folks and their language. They try to be so correct. They call the thing a watermelon. It is a melon of nothing but water. So we have water pineapple. We have water orange, water carrot, water cucumber, water beets, water lettuce. So these are the type of water that I drink. That if you're just drinking water from a stream, from a river, you know, from a well, from a spring, then that water contains inorganic minerals. The minerals in those waters are inorganic and the body cannot utilize those minerals. So those minerals need to be filtered through a plant, like the coconut tree is the perfect filter. It's actually a distiller. 
it removes the inorganic minerals from the sea water, which most coconut trees are abundant, grown abundantly by the sea, or whether it's the, the river water, the lake water, wherever the coconut tree is sourcing its water, the minerals in, those, in that water, the coconut tree converts those minerals into an organic form so that they can be better utilized by the body. Potassium, number one, that you find in coconut water. And we have to understand how these organic minerals function in the body so that we can better appreciate having juices, green juices, vegetable juices, fruit juices, coconut water juice, you know, in order to hydrate our body. This is what regular water does. It just hydrates the body coconut water, watermelon, cucumber water, you know, pineapple water, hydrates the body, but it also mineralizes it. It has electrolytes, electrical energy, electrical charge, electrical force that animates the body and energizes the system without the body having to work to process uh, raw elements to convert and produce energy. You get your energies direct from these highly charged electrical sources of plant water. And this has been all it is for me. Yes, eight glasses of water, drink it, but try to get it from uh, a living source. Of course, many of you are stuck in urban areas, so you gotta buy an uh, alkalinizer, alkalinizing machine, which is actually trying to imitate a coconut tree and trying to remove the acid from the water. Coconut water has 7.6 pH, perfect uh, alkaline acid balance, and this is what we want in our body. We want balance. We don't want the body to be too highly charged with alkalinity, and of course, we definitely don't want it to be on the acid side, but we want it to be balanced. So Bernice is saying uh, an experience she had while on her journey with food. Uh, she's saying, I was vegan for a while and my skin was great, but, when I, but then I broke out for a while. Why did my acne prone out on my skin go bad when I was vegan? Oh, of course, your skin is the largest organ of elimination, you know, and if your other organs of elimination are not doing their work adequately, the colon, the kidneys, and so forth, then a lot of the elimination is going to be coming out through the skin, especially once you change your diet and you're consuming all plant foods. The body now is on a serious elimination uh, course, and it's releasing so much toxins from the tissues, from the cells, and they're coming out through. So what you're seeing is really just elimination. If you continue on that path and consume a high volume of liquid, because you gotta flush, you gotta move these toxins on, you consume a high volume of liquids, you're gonna see that the acne is all gonna clear up. All that is, that, that is manifesting is just the emptying of the trash bin. It's just waste that has been accumulated in the body and now that it's been freed up and so much of it is coming out uh, so radically, so drastically, uh, the rest of the system is asking the skin for extra help. So your skin is working fine. <laughs> Give thanks and praise that organ uh, showed you that it, it was really loyal to you and it's moving out those toxins. So just, you know, grin and bear, <laughs> you know, and know that it's just... Uh, what it is now, but it's not what it's going to be once the system becomes clean. Perfect. Um, so Sasha is saying, uh, so very much like a drug addict, my body will experience withdrawal from the processed food. I know I crave meat at times. What will help those systems? Well, Since symptoms, I mean. Well, just understand, uh, my dear friend, is that First of all, animal flesh consumption, uh, since most of it is, goes undigested, because our intestinal tract is extremely long, it takes a long time for animal flesh to transit through our uh, intestinal system. So most of the time it goes undigested and of course uneliminated. 
so the body tends to store it up. It takes two and a half days for the average portion of meat to actually transit through our system. So if we're eating uh, three square meals a day laden with lots of animal protein, we've really been backed up for years with unprocessed, undigested, unutilized animal protein, which has been stored mm -hmm. in the deeper cellular levels. So yes, of course, it's going to take now at least one year for every two years that you consume animal protein for the last trace <laughs> of meat to leave your body. That is if you just go on a traditional uh, all vegetarian diet with no uh, animal pro products. But now, once you go on a living food diet, consuming all sun-fired raw foods, and also doing detox, doing lots of juicing and fasting, as I recommend on a weekly basis, a 36-hour fast once a week, uh, and also fasting on the solstice and the equinox for three days uh, consecutively, uh, then you would find that a lot of this waste uh, material from the unprocessed meat uh, accumulation would now be leaving the body at a faster rate. So then we're talking like probably uh, it would only take one year for every seven years of you having consumed animal meat for the last trace of it to leave your body. So technically, ideally, if you're steadfast and serious, you know, and you go on this lifestyle and do the extended fasting, such as what I'm doing now, uh, I'm not doing this fasting because I'm toxic or anything of that nature. It is more of a spiritual journey and it's also more of a rejuvenation uh, uh, move and it's in celebration as well for my 70th year of existence on this planet. So I figure, you know, uh, one of the best ways for me to uh, seriously reverse the aging process is for each year uh, that I live from here forward, uh, I add another year, day of fasting to my yearly fasting regimen normally I do within this space of time, the winter uh, uh, solstice. Uh, uh, this is when I do my extended fasting. Last year I did 69 day fast from uh, December 1st to February 7th and I transited and journeyed from, to Brazil, Panama, Jamaica, uh, <laughs> I went to Argentina, I went to Peru, you know, I, I went to Dominica, I went to about eight different countries during this, this fasting period, and it was tremendous. I never felt any greater than I did before. On so that. now I'm moving on to my 70 thing. So, uh, yes, just uh, be, be strong and understand that, yes, it is an addiction that you're dealing with, and the cleansing, the elimination is something that you have to be patient with and just uh, hang in there, hold tight, but take some uh, laxative if you need to, Cascara Sagrada, that's a herb that works quite well, or some senna leaves, or you can even take a colonic irrigation if your system is that bad that really require that type of intervention, or an enema would work quite well, or just drinking aloe vera juice, uh, fresh made aloe vera juice, about a half a cup of it uh, every day for seven days, you're gonna start seeing some some nice smooth movement going on. Yes, next slide. So, people are asking, um, Haiti is asking again, what is really a fast? Not drinking or no solids? Or what is really a fast about? And how much time is a fast okay. really about? Well, the, the classical definition of the word to fast means to hold fast. And to hold fast means that nothing gets past our lips. No liquid, no solid. That is the classical definition from antiquities. So in ancient times, when you read about someone who uh, fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, <laughs> that is basically a classical fast. And that's why it, was, it is specified in those documents that the person not only fasted for 40 nights, because we fast every night of our life. Every time you go to bed for that eight hour period, you're going on a fast, you're holding fast. Nothing goes past your lips, no liquid, 
no water, no solid, nothing like that, no fiber. You do not activate the digestive system. You do not activate any flow within your body. So, but these people that did the 40 days and 40 nights, they fasted during the day as well. They went on the bread, a breatharian lifestyle uh, for 40 days and 40 But today now, in modern days, modern times, it is now uh, readily acceptable that when someone uh, used the word fast, that the definition for a fast uh, in, uh, is primarily restricted or limited or focused on not activating the digestive system that is not consuming any solid food, not putting any fiber into your body, but just consuming uh, pure filtered liquids, especially uh, fresh juices, plant liquids that the body now will not uh, have its digestive system activated. So the body will not be digesting. It requires no digestive process to, to process to, to, to work on a glass of vegetable juice, a green juice, a glass of fruit juice. They get absorbed directly into the intestinal system without activating the digestive system. So when the digestive system is not activated, then the eliminatory system, the elimination systems are now highly active and they're eliminating toxins. They're pushing out waste. So this is what is acceptable today as a definition of a fast. And the volume of liquid you need to consume during a fasting day is one gallon. Four quarts of liquid. Uh, 16 eight ounce glasses of fresh plant uh, liquids in order to allow the body to rest its digestive processes and also to effectively eliminate and having the flow through the circulatory system of moving the toxins on so that purification actually takes place uh, very harmoniously without stressing us out with headaches and other uncomfortable uh, feelings that the profuse amount of toxins that are being released from the tissues at this moment are not overwhelming our systems so that they keep moving and we can flush accordingly. So we recommend a once a week fast for 36 hours. And this is taken into account the two nights that you're sleeping. Uh, so if your fast is say today on a Sunday, you want to fat, begin the fast after your last meal on Saturday, which is the time that we normally begin our fast right at sunset or within two hours after sunset when we're going to rest. That is the fasting mode for eight hours till sunrise or within two hours uh, after sunrise that we arise, then that eight hour period Saturday night and as well as the eight hour period Sunday night because we do not recommend that you break your fast at the end of a day, not at the end of the sunset day. You break your fast at the break fast hour, which is in the morning at sunrise. So you would do that Monday morning. So a 36 hour, once a week fast is very effective. Drinking one gallon of fresh liquids, coconut water, fruit juice, vegetable juice, or even consuming some sun tea, some herbal tea that you just place in the sun in some filtered water uh, or distilled water, ideally water that has been the minerals of all be completely removed so that that uh, water in the jar with your sun with your tea uh, covered sitting in the sun for eight hours the sun is going to extract the medicinal value of that herb for you so that it's now available to you in the in the tea in that sun brewed tea without extracting the toxic elements from that herb which is what generally happens when you apply intense heat to herbs. That is why we never boil herbs, we only steep them because otherwise we're going to activate too much of the unwanted part of the herb uh, in the process. Totally. Um, people are very receptive, they're sending a lot of uh, interaction, they're very happy. Um, we're getting a lot of, it looks like a lot of people that are right now with us 
I live on the winter areas, you know, the, the, yes. the, the parts that are cold around the city. They're like, how do you do this? Oh, yes. Like, how yeah. do I do that? Uh, wow. Do you have any recommendation? Yeah, we understand, you know, uh, pretty much, you know, if you believe in God, <laughs> then you're actually living behind God's back. <laughs> because, you know, the sun is, is, is the greatest God-like potential or energy that uh, we all can attest to that it affects all of us on the planet. So if you live where the sun shines, then you're living on the natural course of life. But if you're living away from the sunshine, then you're living on a collision course with Mother Nature. And of course, uh, that's when you're going to experience this frigid environment being up there in the icebox. I lived in New York City for 15 years uh, during the deep winters. Uh, of, of the 80s, you know, early 90s, uh, when I spent quite a bit of time there uh, cultivating, uh, honing sun fired foods, which were originated the company in Harlem, New York. And as a uh, living foodist, I was able to withstand the cold weather, the cold climate, much more strongly than people that I saw who were whipping themselves with hot food, with hot chocolate, hot coffee, hot tea, hot soup. You know, what you're doing, you're actually whipping the body just the way the, the, the jockey whips a horse and the horse runs faster trying to run away from the sting of the whip. When you whip your body in a cold climate with some hot food, the body generates an excessive amount of uh, metabolic en enzyme activity in order to cool down that hot food which cannot really pass our, you know, our, our throat, <laughs> you know, esophagus. Uh, in that high heat uh, capacity, so the body cools it down instantly, and in order to do that, it generates a lot of enzymatic activity, and so we're actually whipping the body just like the way the jockey whips the horse, and the horse is running away from the sting of the whip, the body is trying to cool down or run away from the sting of the whip of the hot food, trying to cool it down, so we're tapping into our enzyme bag and really start messing with our immune system by using uh, enzymatic activity just to cool down hot food. So what you'll notice is that you become an addicted, a, a, an addict to that because as soon as the sting of that whip wears off later in the day, you got to keep whipping the body for the rest of the day. But if you're eating all living foods, which I consume during those 15 years, and following the sun-fired principles of the electromagnetic energies of living foods, and you consume 50% of the high density foods in the winter, starches and protein, primarily protein, the fatty foods, the warming foods. You see the Eskimos up there, up in, <laughs> up in, 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 the, in the igloos, they consume nothing but fat, blubber, you know. So of course you want to up your fat intake and yes, you can up your uh, starchy intakes as well. And yes, definitely decrease your fruit intake, your high liquid intake. Of course, if you're going to fast in the winter in that kind of environment, you have to be very conscious that if you're going to be exposing yourself to the cold weather, to those freezing temperatures, of course, to your body, your blood is going to freeze much quicker because it's composed of primarily liquids from the juices that you're fasting on. But we know that most of you, even though you're living in a temperate environment, you're not living a temperate life. You're not living like a teddy bear. You're not out there rolling around in, in, in the snow butt naked. You're not living a temperate lifestyle. You're actually living a tropical lifestyle.